Hi, welcome to this session. I'm Shen Yang from Rancher Labs, now a part of SUSE. Today in this session, we'll talk about a new project we have started recently. It's a hyper-converged infrastructure software, but also it's a little bit more than that. A few years back, the concept of hyper-converged infrastructure was proposed. By combining the server and the storage into a distributed infrastructure platform, the HCI software reduced the burden of IT admins to manage the server and the storage separately. Even with the commodity hardware, the software layer is intelligent enough to figure out where to put the data to keep everything highly available. No special storage or server will be needed. It sounds like a pet with the cattle. By switching to the HCI, you no longer need to treat your storage as a pet and nor worry about if you are operating it right or not. And also, just in case you know, Pat with the cattle is also where the name of the rancher come from. I mean, the rancher part, of course. So in the data center, HCI software is driving. But from a software operator's perspective, there's still more left to be designed. You cannot run your application directly and on the HCI since the software is more likely to be designed on top of the VMs. It's because the software hasn't been programmed to know how to spin up VMs or connect to the storage provided by different HCI solutions. And that is because of each of these HCI solutions speak a different API language, which is the part of their proprietary API. The result is IP admins still need to operate software differently based on what HCI or virtualization solution they have chosen. Terraform and other technology are created to help, but still, the IT admins need to learn a lot about how to operate softwares and then writing a lot of customized script to maintain it properly. That is not an easy work. Fast forward to now, we see Kubernetes taking the world by storm. We no longer need to treat application as paths since container and Kubernetes become the de facto application API. As long as the application works on Kubernetes, they can be treated as a cattle. And no one needs to worry about what hardware is running on top of, or what storage is using, or how to spin up multiple VM to run it, since all of this has been taken care of by the Kubernetes. We want to introduce the concept HCI 2.0. By 2.0, we mean we're not only going to integrate servers and the storage, but also going to integrate applications on top of it, through the Kubernetes API. We will replace the proprietary API with the open industry standard, Kubernetes. So let me introduce the project Harvester. Harvester is an open source hyper-converged infrastructure software built on top of Kubernetes. Besides Kubernetes, it's also built on top of multiple cloud native technologies, including Kubevert, Longhorn, KVM, Motus, it's been designed to work on biomental, providing users with a single unified API to deploy their VM and applications. Just as with the traditional SCI software, you don't need to worry about virtualization or storage. Just use the ISO image or PXE to install Harvester on your biomental nodes. Then you have a cluster which can spin up VMs, talking Kubernetes APIs, or even spin up Kubernetes cluster on top of VMs. Now, as long as your applications are speaking Kubernetes API, they can be deployed everywhere, either it's cloud, the data center, or on the edge. Harvester makes Kubernetes ubiquitous, bridge the gap between the traditional SCI software and the modern cloud native ecosystem. And today, we're announcing the first beta release of Harvester. Is Harvester 0.2 and currently it's supposed to follow in features. You can install it using ISO your PX, or PXE and it supports VM lifecycle management and they provide a distributed block storage. We also provide the flexible network options including multiple NIC support and VLAN networking. There is also VM image management support and VM line, VM line migration and finally is you are also able to spin up a managed Kubernetes clusters with the help of Front Rancher. 
So here is the water architecture looks like in the harvest today. Harvester will install case 3 OS on the nodes. Well, the OS might be changed in the, in the future and that will keep you posted. Case 3 OS has bundled with case 3 OS so we can use it to create Kubernetes cluster on the bare metal nodes. Then the Longhorn and the Kubevert will be installed once the Kubernetes cluster is up. Now the user can start running VMs or spin up Kubernetes cluster on top of those VMs. As you can see, there are multiple networks available to the VMs. The management network is implemented by the Kubernetes overlay networking. Other VLAN networking are implemented by the Harvester VLAN CNI plugin. VM can choose to attach to multiple networks and that is thanks to the motors. Well, enough talking. Next, uh, now let me show a quick demo of Harvester. All right, let's dive into some demo. So once you install the Harvester, you should be able to see the IP address you can use to log in the Harvester UI, which is going to looking at like 172.16.19.41 and column 3443. So put that in your uh, web browser and you're able to get to the Harvester UI. So here, um, in fact, for the first time, if you log into Harvester, it will ask you to reset the new password. Here, we already done that, so let me log in. All right. So now you are looking at Harvester dashboard. So uh, this is the Harvester 02 RC1, and which is uh, uh, not a stable release yet. So when the time this video was published, you might see a newer version than uh, what we what I have right now. So we have a total of three nodes and uh, two images and you can also see the CPU and the memory and the storage metrics down here as well. And you can also see like recent events, which is happening uh, to this uh, cluster a few seconds, a few minutes ago. Let's go to the next page. So on host, you can see the detail of those three nodes and you can see um, each of them has uh, what's the operating system they add, what's the IP and all the other configuration of stuff. So on the virtual machine, you can create virtual machine and the volumes will be the uh, storage used by the virtual machines. On the image page, you should be able to import new in virtual machine images for your, um, uh, for your use. And uh, here I already have like two images imported. One is uh, Ubuntu, another one is OpenSUSE. So let's go create some virtual machines first. Create, and I'm going to call this lib01 and I'm going to give it four CPU and four gig, gig of memory. I'm going to select lib image and the SSH key I don't have any right now. So let's skip that. On the volume page, you can see that we are going to create a 10 GB disk automatically uh, for the uh, open source setup for this VM, but you can also add more volumes. On the network, uh, you can see there's already a default network set it up, which is in fact the Kubernetes overlay networking, if you know a bit more about Kubernetes. You can also end, add another network, which is going to be one of the VLAN networking you have configured. So we are looking, we will take a look at VLAN network configuration later. So let's just add this for the VLAN 81 for now. In the advanced options, you have uh, the choices to re override the host name and select the machine type, and also the do the cloud configuration uh, using the metadata network data section. So because the image we have specified is a cloud image, so we need to reset the password so we can log in. Also, um, since we have configured two network interface, we can configure them to be uh, DHCP. So they were going to automatically acquire IP address from DHCP server uh, after, after, after it's starting up. So that's all we need. Let's click create. Now you can see the VM is in creation and uh, we can take a look. 
all the basic information is now showing up and uh, uh, including volumes, network, what SS keys, cloud config we have before. And you can see that in fact, in the event, you can see those are uh, coming from the Kubernetes uh, network, uh, Kubernetes events. So uh, in fact, we are going to do more about this part later to make it more um, easy for the non-Kubernetes orchestrator um, admin, admin to work with. All right, let's go back to the previous page. And we now we can see that the Live01 VM is already running. Click console. You should be able to access the VNC console provided by the setup. Well, it turns out I need to, I don't have enough space here. Now it's good. All right, so seems everything is working. Let's log in. Uh, OpenSUSE is the username for the OpenSUSE lib and also the password will be the password we have set before. So now you can also see uh, there are two NICs, it's zero and it's one. And the name of NIC depends on what operating system you are using, but both of them already get an address. And you can also notice that it's one is getting address from 172.16.91, which is um, uh, in fact our VLAN 91 in that range. We can also um, write some uh, simple tasks here. Right, so let's create this file demo and let's sync it so we can uh, test our demo uh, backup restore feature later. So that's all for this VM, let's close it. So we can uh, create a backup for this VM and uh, let's name it first. Okay, so in fact, a backup is not created yet. This is just saying that the backup has been like initiated and uh, we are going to iron out those uh, small details more, polish them before the final release. And here we have a, a backup in progress and it should be done pretty soon. And this backup mechanism is using the Longhorn backup mechanism and to ship your VM's backup to the remote S3 or NFS server. And to do that, you need to configure the backup target in the setting uh, area. Let's get, take a look at the backup and they should be finished anytime. And before that, we can go through the other features we have. Uh, the, the first one in the advanced menu is the VM template. Uh, for users, you can create um, specific template for certain type of images. For example, here we have listed, if you want to have ISO image, which means you are going to install ISO to the, uh, to the root disk. You'd better choose the ISO based image because they're going to automatically load your image as ISO rather than uh, load it on the root disk. And the raw image base is the default one we are using. And the Windows ISO image based with going to both loaded ISO and also a certain Windows virtual driver container, driver VM uh, uh, volume in order for the Windows to achieve uh, to make the virtual IO driver function. So yeah, now the backup is here, but we'll come back to that later. On the network section, you can see that we have already created two network here and with different VLAN ID. And to create that, in fact, it's very easy. And you can, uh, I know that we have configured a few VLANs in our switch. So I can put VLAN 33 there as well. And this programming, we are going to populate it on all the nodes and create the uh, corresponding VLAN for the network. 
SSH keys uh, don't have anything here. And the only user our beta allows now is going to be the admin user. We are, in a, we are going to support multi-tenants in the later releases. All right, so let's go back to the backup. Now we see that lib01 backup is already ready. So we can try to see, oh, does this really record our data? Let's try it. Yeah, I'm going to create a new virtual machine named with lib01 restore. And let's see how that goes. And in the virtual machine, then you can see the restore is uh, happening and it will take some time. So let's wait a bit. Now we see the lib01 restore is already running. Let's access the console. Yeah, it's putting up. In fact, uh, one point of this restore is all the information, all the configuration from the original VM will be carried over to this restored VM as well. So you can see that when this VM was going, uh, it's going to get created, it we're going to have like two NICs as we configured configured before, and also both of them will be configured with the HTTP address. So let's try logging. By the way, password will be the same too because the same cloud config we have stored. Okay, so both Ether0 and Ether1 has got the IP address. And if you take a look at this demo, contents has been written as well. So this is indeed a restore from our previous uh, VM. So that's, that's good, that makes all the works. All right, so let's move on to the next demo. All right, so another thing you can do with Harvester is in fact um, using Harvester to create Kubernetes cluster directly. So that part of experience is still in polishing, but we can show you some early results uh, we have now. So in the settings, you need to enable Rancher. And then you can see on the right top right, you have a Rancher icon here and click that. We are going to uh, lead you to our building Rancher. So in this, uh, this Rancher version, in, for, for this Rancher installation, we have also bundled with the Harvest node drive as well. So you can just go to the add cluster and then click Harvester and you can just create cluster from here. So let's call it zero uh, guest cluster and just set the name here as one. So three node template already being chosen and this is created before. SCD control plane and everything looks good. And let's try to create it. All right, so now Rancher is talking to the harvester to create this cluster. And if you take a look back on the virtual machines, momentarily you should be able to see three nodes has been created and they're trying to start and uh, serve for the VMs for the new Rancher uh, managed, Rancher spin up Kubernetes cluster. So this is going to take a while. I will skip, for, skip forward. Now the cluster is ready and uh, you can take a look at the node page and uh, listing three nodes, which does the same as we see from the harvester side. And now you can just work on this cluster and adding deploy applications, adding workloads, do whatever you want with this Kubernetes cluster. All right, so that concludes our demo. All right, so this is the roadmap of Harvester. We're planning to have Harvester 0.3 released in the Q3 this year and the GA released later this year. 
there are still tons of work we need to do between now and GA, as you can see from the list here. But I encourage you to download the Harvester beta release and give it a try. We'd love to have your feedback. If you have any questions regarding Harvester, feel free to reach out to the team. You can find the latest ISO in the GitHub Harvester slash Harvester or our website at harvesterhci.io. Also, feel free to join the Rancher User Slack channel, Harvester, and we're looking forward to your feedback as always. And thank you.